Frontier models like ChatGPT and Claude have been able to read documents and images for years. But local LLMs that you run on your own system, while they were great with text, they've had zero capacity to interpret attachments like photos and PDFs. That is, until now. Now, if you saw my video on running a jailbroken LLM locally, right here, you know how fast this stuff is moving. That video blew up, so this is the natural follow-up. Today, we're pushing it further with Quen3 VL30B. The VL stands for Vision Language, and it finally lets a fully local model understand real-world documents the way the cloud models do. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to run this locally on your own system, no internet required. My only goal here is to show you what I've learned and make this stuff easier for you. I'm putting out videos like this all the time, so go ahead and subscribe to the channel now. And if this one helps you, definitely give it the thumbs up, drop me a comment, and give me some feedback because I am listening to you. And with that said, let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, how do you even run this on your computer? You need a piece of software called LM Studio. This runs on a Mac or a PC. In my case, I have a Mac. I know for a fact that to run the good models on a Mac, you need, first off, you need an M processor. I have an M4. Um, this is a Mac Studio with M4. You need at least 24 gigabytes of memory. Um, this computer, I think, has 48, but if you have a 16 gigabytes, it'll kind of work, but I don't think you're going to be able to run these advanced models. So you just go to lmstudio.ai. This is that website, and as you see here, it's pretty user-friendly. Um, you can just basically click this button here to download LM Studio for your computer, and then once you install it, it's pretty self-explanatory after that. But I'm going to now jump into how to actually get the model that you need. Okay, so here we are. We are in LM Studio. Um, on the left-hand side here, there's a little search thing. You need to find, um, if you want to use the exact model I'm talking about, on the left, you'll see Quen 3 uh, VL30B. I already have it downloaded. So on the right here, it says use in new chat. If I was going to use one that I did not have, then I would download the model. So basically, once it, you download the model, you can use it. As you see, it is a 18-gigabyte uh, model, so it's quite big. 30B is 30 billion parameters. That's why it's so big. Um, but this is the most advanced vision model that you can run locally right now. And Quen is a Chinese company. Um, so assume you download it. Uh, it's very easy to do. Then you're ready to go. So if you want to, from the home screen here, at the very top, there's a thing that says select a model to load. I have three models right now on this computer. But Quen 3 VL30B is right here. Um, if I click this, you can do some adjustments here. Uh, the one I like to do, especially since we're doing um, vision, is to really bump up the context length. That's sort of how uh, how many tokens the model can use. So I'm putting this all the way at the maximum, and you'll see why in a second. So with that said, you can load the model. Um, you're, it might warn you that, hey, this is going to overload your system, in which case do not do it because it'll actually crash your computer, and you'll have to restart. Um, but in this case, it, I can use the maximum length of tokens on this particular computer I have. So you load the model, and then what you'll see is um, on the top here, you'll see it loading. In the bottom, you can see you know the RAM utilization, the CPU utilization, and the context, how much context is full. But now the model is completely loaded, and we're going to just say hello, okay, just as a test. So the model is running locally. And that is the very first part of this. Now... The question is, how do we go ahead and load an image? How do we load a document? Well, just like on ChatGPT, you get the little attach file thing, and it gives you this whole explanation here. You can now chat with your own documents using Retrieval Augmented Generation RAG. Here's how it works. Attach files, upload up to five at a time with a maximum con combined size of 30 megabytes. It gives you the supported formats. Be specific when asking questions, mentioning as many details as possible. This helps the system retrieve the most relevant information from your documents, get response and experiments. The LLM will look at your query and retrieved excerpts from your documents and attempt to generate a response. Experiment with different queries. So basically what's happening is it's looking at your document, it's doing some sort of optical character recognition. So it's reading all of the text on the document. And basically there's like little snippets that it's going to return back based on your query to the model to answer questions that you have. And one of the things I've seen is depending on how you ask it, 
you'll get completely different results. And I didn't dismiss this screen because I wanted you to see it. Um, and the image uploader is actually very similar. In fact, it's the exact same. It's, it's doing the exact same thing behind the scenes. Um, and you'll see when you upload any of the documents, it has this integration that gets immediately turned on called RAG V1. And that is the thing that does exactly what we're talking about, where it reads the document and the content in the document. So let's go ahead now and do our first upload. Okay, for the purposes of this video, I have a few documents that we're gonna use, um, and you will see why. So the first one is this map. This is just a map of part of the Austin area, um, and you can see the towns, you can see this giant lake, but I, I specifically did not capture Austin in here, and it doesn't say Texas, so I wanna see, can it figure out from this where this is? So I will show you that now. So we're gonna drag it in here, and I'm gonna say, this is the first example. Tell me where this is. Let's see what happens. All right. So in this case, it worked. It knew right away where it was. Great. And now I'm going to say something else. I'm going to say, tell me some facts about this lake system. Now remember, this is all happening locally. This file did not get uploaded to the cloud. It happened all on my computer and the model is running locally and it's deriving all this information locally. So here we go. Tell me some facts about this lake system. Okay, so it's starting. If you don't know Austin, um, it is incorrect. It's, it has, it's partially correct, um, but it is not completely right. So I'm asking, what is the big lake at the end? This giant lake here. This is called Lake Travis, by the way. Let's see if it knows. That is incorrect. All that it's it's these are all things that are in the area, but it is not true. Um, <clears throat> so this is what I'm talking about when how you ask the question matters. So let's try it again. So I'm going to give it the map again. So read all the text you can see on this document and output it. So I'm not asking it to tell me about the area. I'm not asking it to tell me about the lakes. I'm just saying, read what you see. So now I'm saying, great, what area do you think this is? And you see the large blue areas represent significant bodies of water, including Lake Travis and Lake LBJ. So those are the correct lakes. So tell me some facts about this lake system. Okay, so now this is all the correct information. It talks about the purposes of the lake. They have hydroelectric power generation. It's the Colorado River system. The LBJ is one of them, and Lake Travis is the other. So this is now the correct information, which is completely different than the other version that we got. And that's just about how you have to ask it. And um, one of the things that I've learned, now in this case, it's like analyzing this map and trying to learn what it can from it. But um, in some of the other ones where you actually have a PDF, it depends on how much of it can hold in context. But if you're looking, if you're basing it on image, you have to sort of talk to it the right way about the thing that you're actually looking at. And that is, a, in my opinion, a very important example. And it actually did warn us, if you, uh, if you remember here, it says, be specific when asking questions, mention as many details as possible. So basically it kind of hallucinated the lake system in the beginning because I didn't ask it the right way. All right, so now that's that one. So let's do another one. So there's this book that I love called The Secret. It's an old book, um, but this is a actual PDF. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna upload this. When I say upload, I'm just putting it on my computer. What book is this? It says chosen, chosen context, injection strategy, inject full context. In full, in, inject full content, all content can fit into the window. Now do you remember I made this gigantic context window? That is why. So basically, it's taking the entire book and putting it into memory. So it's 97% done processing the prompt, which is reading this entire book. If you look at the very bottom of the screen, you'll see context is 0.0% .0 full. So let's see what happens when it fully gets loaded into memory. Did you see the context went all the way up to 21%? So the book took up 21% of the context available. So I'm going to test something. All right, so here's this quote from this book. It says, when you want to attract a relationship, make sure your thoughts, words, actions, and surroundings 
don't contradict your desires. So I said, when you want to attract a relationship, make sure your thoughts, words, actions, and surroundings don't contradict your, and I put question mark. So let's see if we can figure it out. Now you might be wondering, why is this so slow? It's because it's not just my question. It's also the entire context of the entire document in its memory simultaneously. Okay, well, it's finally done. It took 220 seconds to do this, um, which is a long time, but at the same time, it did get the right answers. So if you remember the quote says, when you want to attract a relationship, make sure your thoughts, words, actions, and surroundings don't contradict your desires. So I gave it this and I left out the word desires and it gave the correct answer by searching through the entire book and it found it. I don't know if that impresses you or not. It does impress me. And the fact is we could do that locally and it's this is the worst it will ever be. So super exciting stuff. And let's go on to our next example. Okay, so this is a user manual for the Synology NAS um, software. Um, I think it's called Disk something, Disk Software Manager. Uh, but anyway, I will upload this file. I keep saying upload, even though we're not uploading it. And I'm going to say, give me a give me a list of the RAID types that are supported. Now you're going to see something interesting. So again, it takes a while to get the entire document into memory. So let's just, I'll fast forward and you can see it. All right, well, that took an enormously long time, 882 seconds for it to go through the document. It's actually, it, I think it's part of it is the uh, system I'm on. I'm also recording this video in 4K and putting this entire document into RAM. But basically went through the document and was able to analyze uh, the various RAID types that are supported and I'll put that. Now, one of the things I'll say is if I had a smaller context window, then that wouldn't have been possible because it wouldn't have been able to put the entire thing into context and it would be going through the document sampling, trying to figure out what it can actually fit. Um, and so let's actually eject the model now and we're gonna run it again, except we're gonna just leave it on the default instead of bumping the context all the way up. Okay, so we're gonna do a new chat now and we'll upload a new document. Okay, so this is a fun document that um, talks about LM Studio and AI power without the cloud. Put it put on by Cisco, um, which is a networking company. So now we have the much smaller context. Let's go ahead and drag this in. And I will say, give me a quick summary of this document. Now you see, it says the chosen content context injection strategy was retrieval. Retrieval is optimal for the size of the content provided. No relevant citations found for the user. Okay. And then here it's sort of hallucinating. So let's try it again, except this time I will go ahead and modify the context window, make it bigger. That's 75,000. Dragging the document in, and I'm going to say, give me give me a quick summary of this document. So there you have it. So basically, it knew there was LM Studio and, and basically summarizes the document accurately. So hopefully you can see the relationship between context window and the RAG system and how it's able to hold things in memory or not. So let's do one last test here just because I think it's kind of fun. Dragging this in, let me put this up for you. This is how to get started with an Instapot. So basically, this is a um, a cooker to, you know, you probably know what an Instapot is. Anyway, so I will come up with some very specific piece of information here, and I will say, uh, give me the address of Instant Brands LLC. Give... So it says here, chosen context injection strategy, inject full content. All content can fit into the context. And there you have it. So it gave the correct address. And that's great. So basically, the smaller context window, the less of the document it can use, the more you have to be very, very specific about what you're asking for. And basically, it'll scan through in chunks to find the piece of information that you're looking for and have that available for the agent 
to be able to use in the LLM so they can talk to you. Um, and if you don't, then it'll end up just hallucinating stuff. And then if you are able to put enough of it into memory, then you can have the entire document. You could look for a specific sentence and things like that. But basically, this is the very, very beginning here of where we can work with actual documents in a local LLM. Again, totally, this is open source, 100% free. You don't ever need to be on the internet other than to get the models. And you can do all this locally. And this is the beginning. It's going to get a lot better. Eventually, this will work with your file system. And so I just think it's a really exciting time. And hopefully, you like this. So we'll do more videos on LLMs that you can run locally in the future. But this is the first look at vision and language combined together in one local model that's actually very powerful that you could run on your own system. And it's just going to get better after this. So that's it. Hopefully, you liked this video. If you did, again, give it a thumbs up. And please, please, please subscribe to the channel. I want to see you guys again. I love making these videos and I want to hear from you. Please give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and I will get back to you. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. See you next time.